there's no place like home for the holidays and no matter how far away you roam if you pine for the sunshine of a friendly gaze for the holidays you can Welcome back to Horror for the Holidays, a Christmas horror movie podcast. I'm Jay Logsdon. And I'm Jeff Searcy. And uh, Jeff, I think to uh, start off this episode, we should uh, talk about our favorite memories of WCW Nitro. Ah, yes. There was the time that... And that time where they... And of course, all the times where that favorite guy did that thing. I mean... Basically, the, the the big the big selling point for me, and, and and I mean, I think what relates directly to this episode, you can already see the title of the movie and the title of the episode, is that uh, Bret Hart thinks Goldberg is a massive piece of shit. Now, yes. I mean, I was always more of a Shawn Michaels guy, but I do think Bret Hart's a very talented wrestler. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of agree with Bret Hart. Goldberg I mean, is a massive piece of shit. I mean, from what I've heard about them, I mean, not from from the entertainment side of things, I'd say Goldberg is a really good wrestler. But apparently from the technical, like, uh, shop-talking wrestling aspect of it, he's a terrible wrestler. Um, I mean, I'm very... I, the, he's now out of his WWE contract, I believe, last I saw. Mm. And, there, I mean, I don't believe the rumors, but... If anyone could make Goldberg watchable, it would be Tony Khan in AEW. The the stuff that I mean, you know, Tony Khan has gone and made you know Sting so much fun to watch. Like Sting's always been really good, but then guys like Jeff Jarrett, who I think a lot of people were sick of. Jeff Jarrett's a blast every week on Dynamite, um, and then you know Christian has been has been cut loose. I, literally every every person he's gone up against, if they have a dead dad, he brings it up. <laughs> I mean, you gotta, at that point, you got that kind of ammunition in your back pocket. Oh man, Dynamite was so good this week. The only thing I was missing was Hangman. I miss my, I miss uh, my sad cowboy. I was gonna say, what happened to the cowboy shit? Oh, he got, he got, uh, uh they're, they're doing a thing where it's kind of building to like a, a feud between, uh, the Blackpool Combat Club and the Elite. And, <laughs> and I think Hangman's gonna, Hangman left the Elite a while ago and he's gonna come back and join him. Wait a minute. The Elite? Yeah, they're, they're the Elite of the Bullet Club. I thought Superman defeated the Elite years ago. <laughs> That's a different group. <laughs> that was, uh, what? Um, Manchester Black and Associates. <laughs> yeah, Man- oh, man, Manchester Black was cool. Yeah, except now he's not anymore. <laughs> I think, I th- man, my, my Superman knowledge is pretty light. Um, I think they brought him back. Yes, he has been back, and he has caused more trouble, but... I mean, ultimately, he's the very fact that Superman exposed his weakness so easily in the first battle is like, oh, yeah. So I guess he's really not that powerful, huh? All right. Well, <laughs> I don't. Now we're completely off the rails. All right. Damn well, you and your WCW Nitro. <laughs> let's get back into. Uh, let's get back into it. We'll deck the halls, set the scene for this episode. It is uh, 2005 Santa's Slay. Oh, this, uh, so you brought that up for a reason, starring two uh, former four-time world champion bill goldberg oh i thought it was starring his pet goatberg <laughs> um uh, another another strange release date uh october 25th yes. of 2005 and again people if you have a christmas horror movie launch it in december i mean who who <laughs> went to the theater well clearly no one because yes. it made like six thousand yes. dollars it made like a dollar <laughs> like, but like you know who who went to the theater or went to their local store and went you know what i want to see i want to see this christmas horror movie right before halloween it's like okay you know halloween you got your freddies you got your jasons you got your michael myers i mean if you want to stretch it you got like your alien and your predator but if it's christmas themed push it at least to thanksgiving right <laughs> i mean even even you and me, the guys who do a Christmas horror movie podcast, would would be like, it's Halloween. Wait like two weeks and go mm, see it. Exactly. I mean, you could even if you're you want to squeeze in your ghost face around that time, you could do that. Yeah. 
Uh, writer director David Steeman. This is his only movie, but he was an assistant on uh, Castaway, Rush Hour Two, and the prequel to my dad's favorite movie, Red Dragon. My dad's favorite movie being uh, Silence of the Lambs. Mm. The movie that I've constantly referred to as a dad movie because it's my dad's favorite movie. <laughs> I mean, it is kind of a dad movie. Uh, produced by Brett Ratner, who uh, made the worst X Men movie <laughs> and other things, <laughs> yep. allegedly. And I, I think that's how David Steinman got the uh, got this gig. Is I think the movies he I think I think he was like a an assistant producer on stuff that Brett Ratner was the producer oh. on. Quick note here, just my favorite Brett Ratner joke of all time was on the Family Guy episode where they're parodying Taken, and they're at the auction of all the drugged out girls uh, in Paris, and this I say sold for one million dollars. Thank you, Brett Ratner. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> That's all we need to say about Brett Ratner, I think. As we mentioned, uh, Santa Claus is played by a former four-time world champion, Bill Goldberg. Ah, uh, the goat, some would say. Most pertinent to our interests is uh, Robert Culp uh, plays Grandpa Yulson, and we will see him again in Silent Night, Deadly Night 3. Better watch out. Oh boy, I can't wait. I think he plays like a cop. I'm a cop. Also stars like a ton of well-known actors. I mean, yeah. James Caan, uncredited. <laughs> James Caan did not want to be listed in the credits. Not for at all. Not even a little bit. Saul Rubinek, Tiny Listener, Fran Drescher, and then uh, my one of my favorite actors of all time, Mr. Corky Romano himself, Chris Kattan. <laughs> Jed Mosley. Who, uh, even in his tiny role in this movie, still turns in a memorable performance. You know, oh, man. <sighs> I love Chris Kattan so much. <laughs> No can do's, Bill, baby doll. I'm the most powerful architect in New York City. <laughs> As we mentioned, uh, gross box office of $6,982. Uh, I mean, that's a shame. I mean, I'm not going to claim that Santa's Sleigh is an amazing movie, but I think it deserved more than $6,000. Um, I, I thought it was wild, too, because like, I remember this movie being promoted and maybe not like directly promoted on WWE TV, but certainly like... They they bought out ad time to pr- to play commercials for it during mm-hmm. like Raw, yeah, which is more than you know we can say for Barricade, which w- we have vague memories of Barricade being promoted by WWE, and it was Maybe. their own movie. Might just be Mandela effect. <laughs> what kind of uh, do you have any personal experiences with this movie, Jeff? Yes, my sister told me about this movie, and I watched it years before you and I ever met. <laughs> and uh, then when you started reminding me about Christmas horror movies, uh, I watched it again with my brother and thought it was hilarious. And then I watched it again after that one more time, and then I didn't see it again until we watched it for this show. Now, I, I'd, I'd seen it probably about the same number of times. Like I said, I, I remember it being advertised, did not watch it. And then I had a friend bring it up. One time I, we had, uh, we had watched Thanks Killing and as a group. And then like later on that friend was like, oh man, there's like more of these weird movies. And, and you know, it brought up Santa Slay, a movie I remembered existing, but had not seen. And so like a little bit later I watched Santa Slay and I've probably seen it. Yeah. About three or four times prior to this watch through. You want to know another wrestler driven movie? I wish I hadn't seen. <laughs> See no evil. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that's. <laughs> oh boy. And right, I would say most of the WWE films catalog are <laughs> movies I wish I hadn't seen. Are movies that <laughs> exactly. So you're ready to to get into our main our main the meat of the episode, the synopsis. We might as well. All right, so we start off. Uh, I think it's Christmas Eve with the Mason family. We've got Fran Drescher. Chris Kattan, James Caan, the lady from uh, the Urban Legend movie, mm-hmm. and two other girls who I don't remember what they're from, and they're all sitting down at Christmas dinner. They all they all suck. They're all real yeah. mean to each other. They're all terrible people. Um, at one point, uh, uh, I think Chris Kattan like asks his wife what she wants for Christmas, and she she's like a faithful husband. <laughs> and then Fran Drescher is like, "Well, what's the second thing you want from Chris- for Christmas?" Yeah. I have the exact quote somewhere. Well, of course, this is as he's fingering another woman. Yeah, as, he, as he's yeah, as he's fingering Fran Drescher under the table. James Caan then threatens to like gut him like a fish. Yep, that's one of my favorite lines. And then they hear some uh, some like pitter patter up on the rooftop, 
And out comes Goldberg out of the chimney. Bus just, you know, not like stooping down out of the chimney like your classic Santa. Just literally walks through the brick of the chimney. (laughs) Does her, Fran Drescher does it. Goes, Santa? (laughs) (laughs) Peter Griffin. (laughs) And and, and, uh, Goldberg goes, that's right, Virginia. There is a Santa Claus. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and then he does like a, a forward barrel roll, like yep. stabs James Kahn through the through the hands, pitting him to the table, and then proceeds to like makes one of the girls faint, yes. and she falls backwards and like pierces her neck with like a yep. with, on a on a spike, mm-hmm. lights uh <laughs> lights Fran Drescher's hair on fire. That is an amazing shot, and I'm assuming kill. I would hope so. Oh, then, no, then he uh he he drowns her. I think in like oh. eggnog. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, yeah, because she's screaming while that happens. Uh, then Chris Catan's like, you want to fight? <laughs> <laughs> and he, like, whoops out some kung fu moves yeah. just for, like, Goldberg to, like, kick him once and send him flying through, like... Yeah, it's an amazing... <laughs> this whole scene is amazing, and it's... I wish that it set the tone for the entire movie, but then we're going to have, what, a good 20, 25 minutes where nothing is going to happen. Right. <laughs> no, like, like, it starts off so hot, he, uh... He like beats one of the one of the girls like head headed with like a with like the leg of the table, mm-hmm. and then the the other one starts to run away. He picks up the tree the star Sorry. at the top of the tree. Ninja and, like, stars it up. Yep, shurikens it into Why her not? back. And then uh, James Cod was was complain. Oh, kicks the dog. Yeah, <laughs> oh, of course you got to show he's evil. And then uh, James Cod was complaining earlier about how dry the turkey is, and Goldberg shoves <laughs> the turkey drumstick into James Cod's mouth, and then does the uh, pencil trick from Dark Knight. Yep. <laughs> with the uh, with the turkey drumstick killing James Cod. Oof, brutal. And we got our opening credits set to the best Christmas song ever, Christmas Baby, Please Come Home. It's not the Darling Love version, but... <laughs> but, I mean, they had to work with what they could afford. God, I love that song. I, it, is, it is hands down my favorite Christmas song. It is a great song. Uh, we then are at Hell Township on Christmas Eve. <laughs> it's, it's it's Hell, Michigan. Yeah. It has it's, to it's be. basically. Uh, Nicholas Yulson is working at Heaven Sent Deli oh. when Mrs. Talbot... Uh, shows up and is just a real bitch about the whole situation. Just everything. Just being a bitch. Ridicules Sal Rubinek for, like, <laughs> charging too much, for Bis- wishing her a happy holidays, and she's like, none of, none of that PC bullshit. It's Christmas. Bis- Wish me a Merry Christmas. Basically like another town we know it's illegal to be Jewish. <laughs> right. Know. Calls a, calls Mac, like, a slut for no reason. Yeah. Like Slut. And then uh, we see her driving home, and Goldberg appears behind her in his sleigh, pulled by like one massive like snow colored bi- uh, bison. Yep. And ba- he's like, "Move, bitch! Get out the way!" <laughs> oh my god, that's honestly that has to be one of my favorite lines for this entire movie. Just you know, because he does the whole thing, the whole traffic gag, where he tries to look around her to see if there's anybody in front of her, then goes back behind her, tries to get around, and she swerves in front of him. <laughs> the whole time she's just <laughs> swerving back and forth it's... across the road. Oh, it's great. And then he just runs her off the road, yeah. flips her over. Yeah, that's a great scene when the buffalo just flips her car. Uh, but yeah, I honestly, I think earlier they showed him kicking the dog to establish that he was evil because so far he's only killed like absolute pieces of shit. Right. So you're like, is this like an avenging hero, Santa? <laughs> no, because he also kicks dogs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mr. Green, uh, Saul Rubinek's character, gives uh, Mac and Nick Christmas presents. He gives Mac a snow globe from like the Wisconsin Dells. Yeah. Uh, which once again for me establishes that it's in that it's in uh michigan mm-hmm. oh and you know the, how i know it's in michigan because i was tricked yet again into watching another filthy canadian production <sighs> and then he uh <laughs> mr green gives nick a clock with all the time zones on it yeah which will come in handy later yeah it's it's almost like it's foreshadowing for the movie <laughs> Uh, Mac gives Nick a ride home. She clearly is interested in him. He's interested in her. Uh, but Mac is way less lame than Nick is. Nick is yep. just a real fucking annoying piece of shit the whole movie. Pretty much, yeah. He's definitely out of main characters we've had. He's one of the most unlikable. And, Ma- <laughs> and not not like unlikable as in just like, you know, like a bad person. Yes, or something no, like not, that. not morally unlikable, just unlikable in that off-putting general everyday kind of off-putting. <laughs> yeah, real Ted Mosby. <laughs> yeah. A real Jed Tosby. A real, uh, 
<laughs> a real Ross from Friends. I don't know. Other characters. Other main characters and things that people don't like. A real Ralph Macchio. <laughs> Uh, Nick gets to his grandpa's house. Uh, it turns out his grandpa is like an inventor and has made like, I don't know, a nutcracker gun. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's, he's made some great inventions. Brown toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, and has built a bunker in their basement. And also like to get into his house, he has like three sets of locks that you have to unlock and lock oh, every time. Oh, but you want to know his greatest invention? It's a portable record player. <laughs> in, the, in the deleted scenes, yeah, he made a, a portable. <laughs> it wasn't, did he call it like a walk boy or something yeah. like that? <laughs> uh, you know, at least the grandpa is charmingly annoying. We then uh, get another scene of Santa, uh, Goldberg Santa pretending to be a bell ringer. Yeah. <laughs> A uh, mugger shows up, tries to like rob him at knife point, <laughs> and Goldberg just beats the dude up, shoving a candy cane through his eye, yep. and then tossing him into a dumpster. Nice. And there's a deleted scene which they should have left in, where like a little girl's like, "What's Santa doing?" And he's like, "Oh, he's punishing the bad people. Are you bad?" And she's like, "No, I've been good." <laughs> mm-hmm. That would have been nice. Which yet again, it's like, okay, so Santa just killed another piece of shit. Yep. Uh, back at Nick's house, uh, his grandpa starts to tell him the story of Santa. Ugh. And uh, is this where we get kind of the... Uh, like the paper stop motion animation? Yeah, the, the Rankin-Bass animation, yeah. uh, where it's basically, there. you know, Santa was the second immaculate conception to yes. happen. It was the, the where Jesus was the son of God and Mary... Santa was the son of Satan and Erica. I don't yeah. know where they picked that name yeah. from. It's probably one of the producer's wives, sex wives. <laughs> and the, the uh, and basically like the and so while like people would you know would worship uh would worship Jesus and you know and celebrate Christmas, there was like Santa just going around killing people every right. year on Christmas. We're basically on American Dad levels here. We're like, Santa was the bastard son of a whore and a prostitute. (laughs) Yeah. And uh, he, and so one year an angel came down to basically like wagered with Santa knowing that he's a gambling man, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, and they did a curling competition and the, uh, the angel won and Santa had to be good for a thousand years. And it turns out those thousand years are up this year. (laughs) Ruh, ruh. And so that's why Santa's been good the whole time, but then yep. it turns out that, you know, he's... And so this, that's why he's going around killing people now. Damn Canadians, and they're curling. They ruined everything. Earlier on, uh, Nick had mentioned to Mac that all he wanted for Christmas was a Transformer when he was growing up. Hmm. Um, so Mac stops by, gives uh, Grandpa Yulson uh, some fresh Wolverine meat, yeah. and gives uh, Nick... A Transformer toy, and he's a real douchebag about it. Oh, yeah, he's a real he's piece terrible. of shit to it. Well, yeah, because, I mean, initially when he was happy about getting it, I think he was going to get something else, too. But then, you know, he ruined it, <laughs> yep. like he usually does. Um, so they, you know, so Matt kind of storms out because, you know, Nick's just a real piece of shit the whole time. Uh, we then cut to Pastor Timmons uh, being <laughs> a real opposite of uh, Pastor David in The Leech. Well, I mean, opposite at the beginning. Right. <laughs> um... And, you know, basically going around uh, stealing all the money out of the collection plate. And the reason we know that is one of the bills is, like, yeah. stamped with a red stamp. The Lord needs bills, not change. And we see him <laughs> at, at a strip club putting one of the, giving, like, one of the one of the dancers, like, the bill with the red mm-hmm. stamp on it. Doing the Lord's work. Shortly after, uh, Pastor Timmons is in the strip club at the, at the what, the go- gold diggers. The, yeah. <laughs> the gold mine. Um, <laughs> Big Earl's gold mine. <laughs> <laughs> he uh we, santa pulls up in his sleigh um apparently there's ballet service yeah, at this uh, say fancy strip club honestly and and so the uh the valet goes to get in and the 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 buffalo the hell deer as we'll learn it's called uh, yeah the probably the dumbest named thing in the entire movie pulls the valet in him off off screen yep and we get and uh, Goldberg tries to get in. The bouncer stops him, and Goldberg like grabs the wreath off the door and strangles the yep. <laughs> strangles the Classic. bouncer with it. And I mean, honestly, if you're that bouncer, are you trying to stop this guy? And they keep talking about how fat he is, and it's yeah. like, no, it's Goldberg. He's he's clearly all muscle. Say, yeah, he's clearly not fat at all, and which also makes this even more ridiculous. Real, uh, real another wrestler 
uh, movie. San- he's a real Santa with muscles. Yeah. <laughs> we then, inside the strip club, Goldberg walks in, says his famous line, Ho, ho, hoes. Uh, kisses one of the strippers as they walk by. I then assume one of the bouncers knows the no touching rule. Yeah. And goes to goes to confront him. It causes Goldberg to throw one of the bouncers like into another bouncer, so the guy gets in it, like involuntarily stabbed. All the people start like picking up weapons to attack him with, and like Goldberg kicks a kicks a pickaxe back into like a dude's mm-hmm. forehead and like yep. uh, uh, pierces his brain. Lots of great kills in this uh, scene. But honestly, I think one of the reasons that this movie kind of falls down is that Goldberg does not talk a whole lot. He could have had like three or four great one-liners in this scene, but he just stays silent. And then, then sometimes he has them and you go like... And they come out of nowhere. Right, and it's so like, you're like... It, are, yeah, I either keep the quippy one-liners yeah. or don't. It's like, oh, so you choose to do one here, but then he's silent for the other 20 minutes. <laughs> There's a one of the guys, Vince Russo, actually WCW uh, head writer Vince Russo, I believe, is is in this scene, and he gets uh, like electrocuted on a stripper pole. Yep. Goldberg then uh, I think leaves, and yeah. bef- but but before he before he's out the door, he turns around, tells everyone that they've been naughty, and like breathes fire onto a piece of coal yeah well he drinks i think he takes a shot and then breathes it on the coal or something like that and like superheats it and then like burns down the whole (laughs) the whole strip which again is makes no sense at all because it's like he's not bound to be good anymore and he's the son of satan so why would he care if people are being naughty pastor timmons oh while this has all gone on pastor timmons has snuck out the back of the uh snuck out the back of the strip club (laughs) We then uh, go back, or when Goldberg gets into the, uh, back out into the alley, his reindeer, his hell deer. My hell deer. <laughs> pulls back up and is like chewing the hat of the valet yeah. worker. So we know that the valet worker's dead. Classic. Uh, Classic hell deer. Back at Nick's house, uh, like I said, he insulted Mac and she leaves. It insulted her family because she said that his grandpa's a little strange. Yeah. And he's like, well, at least my dad doesn't kill everything that moves with all of his guns. <laughs> yeah. And so Mac storms off. Uh, I think this is kind of then when Nicholas realizes, oh, no, that, that thousand year bet, that ends tonight. And then goes to... That's when also, Nicholas also realizes, oh, shit, I probably could have got laid. <laughs> Goes to Gonad, which is NORAD, uh, for their Santa tracker and asks how accurate it is. And they're like, Santa's not real, dude. <laughs> no, you don't understand. He is. The next morning, it's Christmas Day. We get a great scene of Goldberg, like, riding through a uh, nativity display mm-hmm. and, like, bashing the heads off yeah. of the wise men and stuff. Classic. And then there's a uh, some foul mouthed kids who are <laughs> yeah. like who are like let's open our fucking presents. Fuck this stupid shit. Oh yeah, the, oh the Christmas is such a piece of shit. And then they both open up their presents. Their heads explode. Yeah, and like you joked beforehand, it's like oh it's probably gonna explode. Right. In their I yeah, I hadn't remembered what was gonna happen. <laughs> their heads exploded. Then it cuts back to like their grandma and she's sitting there. She's like, fuck. <laughs> That's the kind of edge you can expect. Yeah, a movie. real foul-mouthed granny. Well, I mean, we already saw one earlier. Yeah, uh, we're then back at Pastor Timmons' church, where he talks about all the sinners that died last night in yeah. the gold mine. Yeah, those de- filthy, disgusting sinners at that so, strip club. We're gonna take a moment and pray for the souls of Crystal Candy, Sierra Rains, Dixie Wrecked, and Tess Tickler. Oh man. Dixie wrecked. I'm going to miss her. <laughs> uh, back at uh, Heaven Sent Bakery, uh, Santo walks up and Mr. Green tells him to go across the street. They're, they're yeah. close today. Go across the tree, street to Tai, tai Fung. But Santa really wants a bagel. <laughs> and uh, Santa then kicks in their door <laughs> and then spears Mr. Green like through some glass. Goldberg's yeah. finishing move. Mm-hmm. And then stabs him and pins him to the wall with a menorah. Yep. And uh, not before before leaving, he stops and looks at the wall and sees the picture of Nicholas <laughs> and his grandpa hanging out with Mr. Green. And he says, wait a minute. That guy I, looks off. I know there. these guys. Um, Nicholas gets information about 
what's happening or, or what's happening uh what what happened at heaven sent bakery yeah. or deli he runs there and so he goes there and finds mr green like pinned to the wall uh, but Mr. Green's not fully dead, and he tells him to watch out for Santa. <laughs> oh, and we forgot to mention uh, when Santa was leaving the deli, he walked by some Hasidic Jews. Yeah. And so there's a great scene where, like, the police show up, and they think Nicholas has done it. And they're like, I don't know. The 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 guys outside said that... Uh, they saw a that guy said, in a Santa suit. Said, yeah, saw a guy in a Santa suit. Oh, we'll take them all in for co- questioning. Don't let those Amish guys go anywhere. <laughs> yep. So they're now at the... Uh, hell township police station and uh captain cock Mm -hmm. uh tells uh, nick that santa isn't the killer that he thinks he's crazy santa's not real to get you know get the fuck out of my face fun fact uh, captain cock is actually the father of uh, dixie rex (laughs) (laughs) uh nick leaves Tells Mac his theory about Santa. We cut back to the police station where there's like a knock on Captain Cox's door. And he opens the door and Goldberg tases him in the dick to death. Yep. Classic maneuver. And we see he's killed like a bunch of other police officers. There's a great one where like he he killed the guy and then drew the uh, drew the chalk outline yep. on the ground around him. That was pretty funny. And one of the guys is like, oh, look, if you, if you track all the kills, it's in the shape of a Christmas tree. And then Goldberg's killed that guy and put all the yeah. Christmas tree pins into the guy. Yep. And then uh, it's like, well, where's the star on the top of the tree going to go? And he, like, put his police badge in his forehead. <laughs> yep. On their drive back, on Nick and, and Max drive back, uh, the, the police car shows up behind him, goes to pull him over. They think it's Captain Cock. It's not, it's Goldberg. Oh no. And he starts chasing after him. He, on foot. Yeah. <laughs> they then like, oh, we lost him. And then Goldberg turn, uh, you know, appears on the top of the car. And, you know, Nick goes to, Nick shoots him off the back and he goes tumbling. I mean, also, based on how uh, Nicholas has acted in this movie, the fact that Mac is still helping him at all is ridiculous. No, absolutely. <laughs> they head back to Grandpa's place, hide in the bunker. Santa breaks in, but not before killing some carolers. Probably my favorite kill. He like, yeah, I think he strangles one of the guys with like a with like his scarf. Yeah. But he he picks up one of the ladies that are caroling and like gorilla press slams yeah. her over his head, and like she falls head first onto like the banister, snapping her neck. Mm-hmm. That's a great one too. Goldberg breaks into the house, uh, finds the bunker, like kicks in the door, but they're yeah. able to like escape out through a back hatch. Goldberg sees on a monitoring system that uh, that they're, they're in the alleyway. Yep, yeah. trying to escape through on some uh, snowmobiles, and Goldberg and Santa Grandpa Grandpa have a standoff. What could it be that Grandpa is the angel because he looked exactly like him? No, it couldn't be. Oh, okay, and so they have this big standoff talking about. Yeah, you know, but I, Goldberg sure does hint that he knows yeah. Grandpa previously, um, and and Grandpa was getting ready to fight Goldberg. Only for the uh, the reindeer to show up behind him, yep. and, and Goldberg goes, "Oh, Grandpa got ran over by a reindeer." Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> uh, Goldberg then like approaches him because I assume Grandpa's still kind of alive, yep. and he stabs him to death with like a icicle. Yep, classic maneuver. Uh, Santa Goldberg chases Mac and Nick through a bunch of through like the town, throwing a bunch of exploding presents at them. Um, at one point, almost like bucking them off their snowmobile. And chases them all the way back through town where there's a big Christmas concert going on. Oh, this is also uh, the part of the movie where he says one of my favorite things. Uh, Christmas sometimes scares the dickens out of people. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think, and yeah, like um, at one point starts chasing down uh, Pastor Timmons who's dressed as Santa. Yeah. And he's like, and Goldberg also says something like, I'm just here to spread a little yuletide fear. Mm-hmm. Causing, costing uh, Pastor Timmons to faint. Honestly, the way that he does his weird one-liners and the, like, the voice that he's putting on reminds me a lot of Freddy Krueger. No, I, I, I think that's where the inspiration certainly came from. Nick and Max sneak into their high school because apparently that's a good place to hide from Santa Claus. Oh yeah, Santa never find us in here. Uh, Nick reaches into his backpack and pulls out the chestnut gun that his grandpa gave him earlier. And it said like it's something about it being a practical gift or something like that is the yeah. note attached. Um, there's a great, very strange scene where like Goldberg starts chasing them through the school, 
and they're like running away from him round a corner and then he's still walking towards them coming in the other direction i did i i watched that three or four yeah. times and i'm like how did he get in front of them because he's the son of satan i think it was just very poor editing no are you alleging <laughs> that this movie is not the highest quality sir no you're right <laughs> Yeah, you gotta watch guys like this. Trish tries to sneak stuff by you like that. <laughs> they hide in a uh, in the library. Uh, Goldberg sees them, throws like a smoke bomb Christmas ornament at him. Of course, I mean you know like Santa's usually got. And they they run away some more. At one point, he like hawks up like a flaming loogie and <laughs> yeah. spits it at him. I don't know when it's ever been established that Santa had flaming loogie powers, oh, but well, whatever. You, know, you had fire breath earlier, so you know who cares. He the they like they they run out through a set of doors and are just immediately on the ice rink on the school's ice rink. Oh yes, the school's ice rink where they're gonna break out the school's zamboni. You know something only a Canadian school would have, or maybe a Michigan school. No, 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 you can't fool me. He has a uh, Nick and Mac kind of cornered in the middle of the ice rink, driving the zamboni towards them. We get a great scene where Mac like lets out a really good final girl scream. And then yeah. he stopped, and it turns out he stopped by like a glowing, curling rock. And who should appear in, in all white glowing vestments but Grandpa Yulson as an angel. What? No way. It's, it's almost like he was the angel all those years ago because he was. Oh my god, you mean the guy who looked exactly like Grandpa in the flashback thing? It turns out that Grandpa Yulson, yep, Grandpa Yulson was an angel, gave up his divinity uh, for a mortal woman. And Goldberg said he would chase him to hell and back to, to find him. And so that's why Grandpa hid in hell, Michigan. Also, I don't want to go into biblical lore here, but isn't that, that like something that's completely against biblical uh, sources? I have no idea. For an angel to give up their powers to be with a human woman? I mean, isn't that kind of like what happened to Lucifer? I, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what uh, was triggered. One of the things that was supposedly triggered the Great Flood was the Nephilim, which were the spawn of angels and humans. God thought they had to be wiped out because they were too powerful. So. Well, uh, and apparently in this one situation, it's fine. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> they, they're going to have another curling match. Oh, yeah. To, uh, Let's settle this Canadian style. And if, if, uh, if, if Goldberg wins, he gets to wipe out the last Yulson. And if uh, Grandpa wins, Goldberg has to be good forever. Uh, grandpa goes first, gets the, his curling rock all the way up to the hole without going in for whatever reason, the scoreboard's now work now working and we get a one nil <laughs> buzzer sound Goldberg Santa acts like he's going to curl and instead picks up grandpa and hurls him across the ice, throwing nice. him into the pit. And then the scoreboard, all the, all the, I think it says score for the home is six score yes. for the visitors is six. And in the sixth inning, so it says six, six, six <gasps> hilarious. Oh my God. And also, this would have been the perfect moment for Santa to do a crazy one-liner, and he doesn't. Goldberg uh, turns around, attack, like breathes another flaming hairball or whatever, yeah. and Nicholas shoots his nutcracker gun, and it breaks through it and, and knocks Goldberg down. And Goldberg basically tells them that, you know, because Nicholas has been convinced, I think we skipped over this, that the whole time, oh, we just have to make it to midnight Greenwich Mean Time. Yeah. Um, and then Santa will lose all of his powers. And, and, and Goldberg Santa, insists that that's not the case. Santa's like, Christmas is over when I say it's over. Yep. And they're, they're able, but clearly he got hurt by the flaming gun. Grandpa kind of reassures them he didn't fall all the way in. They're able to pull him out yeah. of the hole. Uh, Goldberg, I think, drives the Zamboni off. And they, they kind of chase after him, and they're able to lure him back to the to the skeet shooting field where... Uh, the mob at his local hillbillies is there to and, take care of business. And Mac's brother is there, and, and you know, and Mac, as we know, Mac's dad loves to hunt. And Nicholas says something stupid about, like... Oh, did you ever wanted to hunt a flying deer? Yeah, well, a flying deer, what's that? It's like, oh, a big one. And then it's clearly a buffalo. Yeah. And... So they're all shooting at him. I think Nicholas is even getting ready to take a shot just for like a rocket launcher rocket to come out of nowhere and blow them up. You know, like you got. And it turns out that it was Mac's dad, who, who as we learned, is a big hunting fan. Yeah, a big hunting fan. You know, you usually hunt with rocket launchers. So they go to they go to investigate and they find Pastor Timmons' body pierced through the... Uh, 
peers through the flagpole in front of the school with the hell deer like strapped to uh, the, they've strapped the hell deer to max dad's hood so we can yep. frame it and put it up on the wall mm-hmm. and everyone is convinced pastor timmons did it but not mac and nick they know that it was actually santa claus but we know the truth and but as for me and grandpa we believe <laughs> right exactly <laughs> um you know, a Mac at one point says something along the lines of like, shouldn't we tell them? And he's like, no, everyone deserves to have a good Christmas. I'll just, I'll mount this lone watch on the wall waiting for Santa to return. <laughs> uh-huh. I think he's thinking about mounting something else. For a, for a movie that we won't get where <laughs> Nicholas continues to hunt down Santa. Ugh. Mac kisses Nick and we cut to an airport where, what, what was it, North Pole Air? Yes, Santa's trying to get a flight home. And he's stopping in, uh, yeah, he's stopping like in Borneo, or, or he's stopping like in Ottawa before continuing on to Borneo <laughs> in the North Pole. And it's like, oh, our, our Miss Miss Satan, it's pronounced Shaitan. <laughs> oh, like the hockey player, uh, which I don't get the reference of that, but whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know a lot about hockey. I don't know a lot about Canada. We then go to our closing credits, which uh, have. Some other uh, Christmassy kind of, I think, a song invented expressly for the movie about, like, Bye Bye Santa. Yeah. You killed my gramps and you tried to kill me. I hope your sleigh goes down in the sea. Uh, Bye Bye Santa. Santa Bye Bye. Bye Bye Santa. Santa Bye Bye. (laughs) I mean, it's better than Christmas by myself, that's for sure. Oh, really? (laughs) Because I've been wanting to spend Christmas by myself. We then get a post credit scene. I think our first post credit scene in any of these movies. And Goldberg Santa is looking at his Christmas list, checking it twice, and then he turns and looks at the screen and says his famous catchphrase, Who's next? Yep. The end of the movie. I mean, I don't know how famous a catchphrase it is. If you're a wrestling fan, you know that's Goldberg's catchphrase. Oh, it's, it's amazingly famous. But it's not like Suck It or, you know... If you smell what the rock is cooking, or or that's yeah. the bottom line because Stone Cold said so. Yeah, like, I was gonna say it's not really at that level, or you know uh, the Hulkamania thing or yeah. whatever. Say your prayers and eat your vitamins, brother. Or uh, any whatever Macho Man was saying last week, the Ooh, cream will yeah. rise to the top. <laughs> or or even you know John Cena's "You can't see me." Yep, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, honestly, as far as a wrestler breaking out into a movie role, I would never have called Goldberg. It's like, he was an interesting enough wrestler, I guess, and it's like, his matches were fun to watch sometimes, but it's like, of all the people wrestling at that time, he did not seem like a likely person to break out into the movie industry. I think for like the early 2000s, you know, into the, uh, into maybe even the 2010s, this was probably one of the best wrestler acted movies. And then as soon as like, John Cena started, you know, being a little funny in his movies. Yeah. And then, you know, you've got Batista being just the best wrestler turned actor on the planet. Well, I'd say, and of course you got The Rock, too. I I don't think The Rock's that great, but... Well, I'm not saying, like... I'd say that to his face. I wouldn't say he's an amazing actor or anything, but he definitely has had a lot of successful movies. And I could see him starring in something like this before Goldberg. Right. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I, you know, yeah, we've gotten to, got to a point where like Batista is clearly the best wrestler turned actor. I mean, he's great in everything. Batista is just a great actor in general. So do you want to get into our minutia? Do you have anything else before we, <laughs> I just want to say that I enjoyed this movie a lot. The first time I watched it, I enjoyed it a lot. The second time I watched it after taking a few years break. But apparently you need to take either long breaks between watches of this movie or I don't know. Maybe eventually you just grow out of it. I don't know. But it, it was not as good this time. It's it's real uh, not not your daddy Santa Claus yeah. movie. And I feel I feel like it tries too hard to yes. like have jokes that are not, you know, like, you know, like, a, like, like the lady said, like none of that politically correct bullshit <laughs> or like, maybe, but you, the jokes just fall flat. Honestly, it could just be because I'm so much more critical of everything I watch now since we started doing this right. show, but it's like, I've seen so many moments in the movie where it could have been done better or it's like missed opportunities with jokes and things like that. And it's like, uh, it's a kind of exhausting to watch almost just like rewriting the movie as we go along in my head. All right, so where do you want to start in for our minutia? Oh, you know what we're starting with. We're going to talk about the Christmas sweater. Oh, favorite outfits, favorite uh, set set, set pieces. Yeah. I mean, obviously, if we're talking set, special effects, etc., the hell, dear. 
Horribly named. Awesome looking though. Yeah, they got a real uh, buffalo. Or I think two real buffalo is what we what we saw in the special features, mm-hmm. and and like dusted them white. They it looks so cool. It, I mean, they're it's awesome. It's just the fact that they didn't go with the standard reindeer too, I think, was a great choice. It's it's a great look. Um, I mean, Goldberg is probably the coolest horror movie Santa. I think mm-hmm. I think, or or possibly even Christmas movie Santa. He looks awesome. He does. His, he looks really really yes, cool. His suit was very well done. And then uh, even the sleigh, we we, mm-hmm. we saw the special features. The sleigh was like designed to look very Nordic. Yeah, with the little Viking shields along the side and everything. And yeah. I think even like kind of the dragon head at the mm-hmm. front. Yeah, it's very long ship looking. No, I like like Gold, Gold Goldberg's look. Everything about like everything about like his thing as Santa looks awesome. Mm-hmm. It doesn't quite match up to it later on but but yeah. he looks amazing but and that see that's another thing that just makes you go like ah oh, man if he'd just been in a better movie well and, and you know and where we've talked about a couple times now the oh i want to i want to make a horror movie oh hey i can find a cheap santa mm-hmm. claus outfit yeah, it's like we could do santa and like this is this is an expensive looking santa yeah. claus outfit that looks great yes. like clearly this was designed to be mm-hmm. this movie yes clearly they did not just insert santa at the last minute into another script um, another thing I, I noticed is uh, Grandpa Yulson mm-hmm. wears kind of like a, a red and black flannel shirt and like a little kind of hat. Yeah. And when he dies, his red and black flannel shirt is now white and black and his like gray hat is now white. And I thought that was really neat. I thought that was a cool look. Yeah, that was cool. I like the uh, deli. That was a cool setup. I liked um, the a lot of the Christmas decorations, but especially like the Christmas Eve dinner at the beginning. In the, I mean, one of the best scenes of the movie, but just the way that everything's decorated with the fireplace going and all that, and the Christmas lights around, mm-hmm. I thought it was really nice. No, it's it's really cool. I, I th- there's a lot there's a lot to like, and and you know, in and and we could we'll we'll talk about it later. I'm I'm sure, but the one of one of my big things is like compare that to like uh, letters to Satan Claus, mm. where it just where everything felt Christmassy. It feels like this movie like. They're like, ah, oh, it's good enough. Yeah. Like, and there's just, there's so many things where it's like, you could have made it look a little more mm-hmm. Christmassy here and a little more Christmassy there. Yeah, that's true. Uh, do you want to do uh, Christmas carols next? Uh, favorite quotes? Sure. Right. Let's do it. So, uh, one of mine is just the, is the old grandma just saying, fuck, <laughs> after her grandson's heads get exploded. I mean, you gotta love that one. Um, what was it? Oh, when, uh, when Grandpa Yulson, a.k.a. the angel, comes back and he's like, Fear not, Nicholas, you are forgiven. <laughs> After he says, Oh, God, forgive me. Or <laughs> right. <laughs> the At the beginning of the movie, Chris Kattan, uh, the lady from uh, Urban Legend, the killer from Urban Legend, and Fran Drescher, uh, Chris Kattan turns to his wife and he goes, Hey, w-, and then he winks. What does old what does Gwynny want from big old Santa this year? <laughs> and Gwen goes, a faithful husband, and Fran Drescher goes, Virginia goes, ha ha, that's the what's the second thing she wants? Um James Kahn's character, uh, Mr. Mason, he's like, I was thinking to God, don't let this bird taste like a shindig like it did last year. <laughs> let it be tender and moist just for once. And then Virginia's like, yeah, moist, that would be nice. It's called foreplay. <laughs> <laughs> when uh, Nicholas is, like, berating his grandpa for all of his stupid inventions, he's like, file that next to brown-colored toilet paper is a bad idea. A little uh, continuation on my last quote. Uh, Mr. Mason says, I don't want to screw the bird. I want to eat it. I should have handled this turkey from last year. Uh, yeah. He's like, I should have handled this turkey from last year. And he... Uh, the dog jumps up and tries to uh, grab some food off the table, and he's like, <sighs> "Squibbles." <laughs> uh, when Miss uh, When Miss Talbot leaves Heaven Sent Bakery, she says, "Thank you, and go fuck yourself." <laughs> God, I mean, basically everything Miss Talbot says is amazing, <laughs> but one of the things. I loved uh, was when they're fighting uh, Santa and Nick shines a light in uh, Goldberg's face and he's like, I'm Santa Claus, not fucking Dracula. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, and, and that's like the, is that the first time or the second? I think that's the second time that Nick tries to shine something in Gold- Goldberg's eyes, something yeah. shiny. And it's like, why are people continuing to do this? <laughs> oh, and the whole, 
the uh, whole uh, Darth Vader, Obi-Wan Kenobi moment they have when uh, Grandpa returns. And he's like, still spinning your wheel, Spawn of Satan. And Sith is like, I haven't heard that name in years because he speaks it in like the old Norse. Right. <laughs> Um, what, what last one I had with, uh, that we kind of mentioned it earlier, uh, pastor Timmons says to Santa Goldberg when he gets launched up into his sleigh, he's like, what the hell are you doing? And Santa goes, I'm just trying to spread a little, spread a little Yuletide fear. <laughs> oh, and this isn't really a quote. It was a tagline, but when I was looking at the box, um, it said uh, he's making a list. Pray you're not on it. <laughs> That's a great, that's a great yeah. tagline. <laughs> Do you have any others? Nope, that's it for me. All right, do you want to do uh, Broken Bulb, Brilliant Bulb? Sure. One thing we would fix, uh, one thing we want to shout out. You want to go first or me? Uh, I could go first. Uh, Broken Bulb, a- as I said before, like I-, I think it tries too hard. I- we-, we said this like almost immediately. It tries too hard to be not your grandpa's mm-hmm. or not, you know, not your daddy's Christmas horror movie. Like yeah. just the, the, the joke, some of the jokes, just some of the jokes are very funny and still land, yeah. but a lot of them just kind of like land flat. And I, you know, I'm not sure if that's multiple rewatches. I'm not sure if that's us looking at things a little more critically. I'm not sure if that's just the jokes, not as funny as it was the first time we heard it. Could and be, yeah. you know, it, it could be any number of things, but yeah, it's just, it's, it, it tries too hard to be like, Oh, we're, we're not politically correct. And it's like, who gives a shit? Like <laughs> just, just make a movie. Like you don't need to, I, I don't know. You, you don't need to like say, you know, have some of these jokes that just aren't actually very funny. What do you mean, Jay? We're living on the edge. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of my big, my big thing was I'm just like, you know, clearly you know it it, well this isn't your daddy's gremlins like (laughs) your your grandpa had silent night deadly night or your grandpa had a black christmas your daddy had gremlins and now you get santa's sleigh yeah (laughs) sounds about right (laughs) so that was mine all right my broken bulb was let santa talk more I mean, if you're going to have somebody, I know that Goldberg can be funny because I've listened to him talk before outside of the ring, even just his one-liners in the ring sometimes. It's like you got somebody who has decent comedic timing and who's, I mean, has so many built-in puns, being Santa Claus and killing people. And it's like he barely talks in this movie. I think, I can't remember what I counted. It was either he speaks maybe 20 to 25 lines in the entire movie. And it's like, he could have been, he, I mean, you should have just went, if you're going to do the Freddy impression, just go full Freddy. Mm-hmm. I think it would have made the movie a lot better. No, he, he could have been quipping through the entire strip club, mm-hmm. killing people. Yeah. Like It's like just so many moments throughout the movie where it's like the perfect place for a one-liner and he's just silent killing people. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, I think walks into the strip club, says ho, ho, ho's, kills a bunch of people, calls everybody naughty and leaves. No, he could have, he could have, you know, said like, he could have said like, don't lose your head over it or yeah. something like that. Or, or, you know, the pickaxe thing. I got a bone to pick with you. Yeah. Like all sorts of shit he could have <laughs> yeah. said. Uh, brilliant bulb. Uh, one thing you want to shout out? Uh, I would like to shout out just the fact that this movie is an entertaining movie, despite how, uh, out how- the pieces don't seem to really fit together. And the fact that they managed to make this movie semi-entertaining, even with its like kind of weird warp sense of humor that doesn't really seem to fit the material at all. I mean, I just want to do a shout out to the production team and the actors in this movie, who I think just did the best that they could with what they were given. I can agree with that. I, I, I do think they, you know, they, they did a good job with, with what they had. And, and I made a, made a fun movie, I mean, even if it's not the most watchable thing yeah. on, you know, on multiple rewatches. I wanted to shout out the, uh, the soundtrack. Yes. Um, not only that, uh, you know, not only does it have my favorite Christmas song, Christmas Baby, Please Come Home, uh, but also has some other fun songs that were like invented for the movie. Uh, by, that Bye Bye Santa. Mm. Bye Bye Santa, Santa Bye Bye. bye. Um, and then there's another, there's another one I think that was made just for the movie called Christmas in Detroit. Yeah. <laughs> which yeah. also is a reason why I think it takes place in Michigan. Why mm-hmm. would you be thinking about <laughs> Detroit? Uh, it also has some classics, like kind of the, the bed under the movie, like when just kind of like things are happening there, they play like a little bit of dance of the sugar plum fairies. Mm-hmm. Do, 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 yep. do, 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 like that plays kind of throughout the movie. Um, you get, you know, jingle bells at one point, you get deck the hall. So you get kind of a mix of stuff and, and I just a pretty solid soundtrack. Yeah, it is a nice soundtrack. Last thing we have left, uh, Christmas spirit, how Christmas is the movie, how Christmas are the kills. 
That's the main problem, too. Another thing that really just does not work about this movie. It's simultaneously incredibly Christmassy and also like has no Christmas feeling about it at all. That, that that was kind of what I what I said too, and 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 I think we we kind of like bounced off each other. Is like it's like they went up to the point, and they're like, "That's ah, good enough." Yeah. And and you know, I read that they had they had like decorated all the banks in town to be like Christmassy, mm-hmm. and then you don't see them in the movie. Yeah. And just all sorts of little things happen in it, and it's just like it, it the the movie could have been more Christmassy. The movie could have leaned into it more, like Letters to Satan Claus. Yeah. Where that movie just every scene was was covered in christmas stuff and it just mm-hmm. just felt amazing where this one it's like yeah oh okay there's snow on the ground put some lights up oh that's good enough yeah. like it's like we have everything that should make this movie feel really christmasy but they never really lean into it and just the tone that the movie sets i mean there's christmas horror movies that can still make it feel like christmas we've watched several this one you just feel like it's kind of just set at christmas and that really has nothing to do, even though like the central thrust of the story is about Santa <laughs> in Christmas time. But it's like it really just feels like a secondary thing. It feels it feels like a real like the town that forgot Christmas, <laughs> yeah. and then it also just so happens that Satan's spawn has showed up to kill yeah. everybody. Uh, but I I think the kills. I mean, not only are they being committed by Santa, mm-hmm. that makes them very Christmassy. I mean, he does. You know, he kills a bunch of carolers, which is very yeah. silly. Kills a person with a wreath. Yep, I mean, strangles the dude with the wreath. He killed, well, I mean, it's not really Christmassy, but he kills a guy with the menorah. Yep. I mean, it's, it's it, yeah, it's in the, it's yeah, in the it's Christmas in the season. holiday spirit. Yeah. Um, you know, a bur- uh, uh, fiery piece of coal burns down the yep. whole strip club. You know, runs people off the road with his, uh, with his, with his hell deer. My hell deer. Also, another huge missed opportunity. Why name it a hell deer? I know. I, I I think they could have just called it a reindeer and it would have been a less silly line. Yeah, honestly. Um, and then the, you know, uh, killed the killed the guy and like put his put all the Christmas tree decorations like on mm-hmm. him. Like that looked kind of neat. Yeah. But yeah, overall, I mean. Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, you watch it and you're like, eh, it could have. I mean, it doesn't have the same kind of Christmas feeling you get with something like a Black Christmas or. A, even like a silent night, deadly night. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, a, yeah, a killer Santa, you know, in that movie, but yeah, just the movie feels a little more Christmassy than this mm-hmm. one did. I, I completely agree with that. Uh, so let's get into our final rating. Uh, we rate each episode. We rate our movie that we watched on one of three categories. Is it ho ho hilarious? Is it seasonally scary? Or is it, you'll be sorry, Jeff. All right. I'm going to cheat on this because I'm a dirty cheater. All right. Uh, I would say if this is your first time seeing this movie, I would rate it as ho 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 hilarious. But if you have already seen this movie or probably listened to this review, I would say it's probably going to be you'll be sorry. I mean, this is not a movie that's very rewatchable, which I think really works heavily against it because uh, the people who love to watch Christmas horror movies generally love to watch them every year mm. around Christmas time. I mean, and that holds true for even non uh, horror movies. In Christmas movies, people love to rewatch around the Christmas season. And it's like, if you can't rewatch the movie and enjoy it again, as much as you did the first time, then it's kind of failed. Um, no, I, 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 I get kind of completely what you're saying. And I kind of agree with it. I, I went with ho, 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 hilarious. You know, I, I put down it, it's worth a watch, but I don't know if it holds up, it holds up well. Mm-hmm. Um, on over multiple rewatches, I think it would be fun to like put on at a party. You know, we said the same thing for uh, Thirteen Slays at Xmas. Like, yeah, you know, kind of. It's a funny movie. It'd be a fun thing to watch at a party. Uh, a couple of years ago, Joe Bob Briggs and Darcy did a did a showing of this in Chicago, mm-hmm. and I think that would be a blast to attend. Yeah. Like, see see it with a bunch of people on a big screen it would be so much fun. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think you're right. This is kind of like an event movie. But, you know, I, I just, I felt it wanted, it really wanted to be like gremlins, even down to like the inventor grandpa, mm-hmm. like, you know, the, the, the love interest, like everything felt kind of gremlinsy, but gremlins is a much better movie. Yeah. It, it wanted to be gremlins. It wanted to be nightmare on Elm street. And I don't think it really succeeded at either one. Also, uh, I, Nicholas is just really fucking yes. annoying. Oh my God. Yes. Talk about a drag. It's like. If your main character is going to be bland and uninteresting, just leave him that way. Don't make him actively annoying. <laughs> and, you know, and that kid's that, that, that guy's still acting. That guy's still like a successful actor. That but... man is still getting work. <laughs> right? Like wild. 
I mean, maybe he was playing a character. He must have been if, if he's still getting I mean, up I to hope, this day. I hope so. His, his other performances are better than this one. Uh, so let's uh, let's take our villain. Let's take Goldberg Santa Claus and uh, put him on our, our naughty list where we uh, rank these uh, movie villains from most naughty to least naughty. I mean, we got to rank him pretty high tier. I mean, he's definitely, he's supernaturally strong. He seems to be like, mostly impervious to damage and i mean he's got his uh flying hell deer i mean we we see him at the end of the movie he there's not a scratch on him yeah. like um i i said honestly just below satan claws mm-hmm. like we you know he's the son of satan yeah. so like let's put him just below letters to satan claws satan yeah i would say so i mean you almost have to because just on the feats he's demonstrated in this movie he's way more powerful than a lot of people on our list so yeah, I, I I think that's a good place for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, you know, I still haven't done that thing I said I was gonna do where I was gonna go through and actually write down all of our villains, so we could put them on a list. We still need to do that at some point in time. Uh, we, can, we'll we can actually have a around. concrete list. We'll get around to it. Uh, so with that, we'll uh, dig into our email inbox or shove some junk food in our faces in a segment we like to call Garbage Day. Huh? No. Jeff, I think these uh, people really don't like to uh, like to send emails. I think they like punishing us. I, say, I think they want us to die. And so, uh, as everyone knows, uh, even though we run a Christmas horror movie podcast, we are uh, what people would like to call summer boys. <laughs> big, hot, wet summer boys. Yeah, our, us, us big, pasty, fat guys. We, <laughs> we really love summer. And because we're summer boys, I got us... Uh, Mountain Dew Summer Freeze to try. Ah, I've tried the Zero Sugar, but not the regular one. It's a little uh, little condensated because they've been sitting in this hot room. I was going to say, because we record in an oven. <laughs> <laughs> so, get into our uh, classic Summer Boy, Summer Breeze. In the words of Grandpa Yulson, I'm roasting down here. It's Mountain Dew with a blast of summer of... Americana. I mean, it's bomb pop Mountain Dew. Let's be honest. It is, and it's pretty good. I no, I think it's very tasty. I mean, you can't really go wrong with. I don't know what it is, but I've seen bomb pop flavor in a ton of stuff over like the last year. Like every energy drink is getting a bomb pop flavor. Now we're getting bomb pop flavored Mountain Dew. It's like, is there some kind of like sale on bomb pop flavoring? I think I think I think someone just somewhere decided like. Bomb pop is the flavor of summer, and and so now we're just getting all sorts of uh, of summer stuff. Well, apparently it also saves you ten calories over regular Mountain Dew. I'm sure that'll help. <laughs> that'll help before your inevitable uh, what, liver failure or uh, whatever. My liver. <laughs> Uh, but no, I, I think I do think it's pretty tasty. Um, yeah, it's not bad. Also, uh, one thing I want to shout out, I, I was curious because you and I, well, when I was picking this up, I was like, oh, remember when uh, remember when we tried that voodoo yep. last year and we kind of agreed it tasted like sour candy. Mm-hmm. And I had I'd heard someone say they thought it tasted like a blue airhead or something like that. So mm-hmm. I was I was just kind of thinking about that. So I, I curiously Googled what last year's. Uh, voodoo flavor was and hey we were right at sour candy nice so uh high five uh, uh, we failed oh, there, close oh, enough uh, almost got it there oh great job yeah that was the perfect one take <laughs> high five <laughs> but if you guys would like to uh spare our blushes and send us an email <laughs> our email address is horror for the holidays at gmail.com just the name of our podcast all one word horror for the holidays at gmail.com send us an email our wives will thank you um and uh kind of on to plugging stuff uh <laughs> one thing that i do want to shout out on to plugging stuff is huh? uh <laughs> is uh funding on indiegogo for the sequel the fan-made sequel to black christmas it's me billy uh they are currently funding for part two right now uh the first part of it was a lot of fun you can watch it on youtube Mm. uh feels very in the spirit even if they go in a different direction they think claire lives um okay 
uh, or sorry, not Claire, Claire dies. They think Jess lives. Um, but they've got uh, the reason Claire was on my mind is Claire, the actress who plays Claire, Nancy Griffith is going to, uh, Griffin, I don't know, is going to be in the movie as Claire's sister. And then they got, uh, Jess Bradford, Olivia Hussey herself to be in the sequel. Oh, cool. So I think that'll be very cool. The, the first movie was a lot of fun, kind of took, uh, the plot of the original movie, but took some of the stuff from uh, the 2006 remake and, and added it to it and, and made a really fun movie that you can watch for free on YouTube. And like I said, they're going to be they're funding to make part two of this and kind of finish up the story. And, cool. and I, I'd like to see where their vision goes. So if you can throw some cash their way, I think that'd be great. Yeah. Uh, Jeff and I have already thrown about one hundred and fifty dollars at it. <laughs> and that's all we could afford. <laughs> I had more than I wanted to, but then I saw uh, I saw those uh, uh, Nancy uh, Griffin made the uh, uh, some ornaments, uh, uh, okay. and she signed them, and so I was like, well, I got to get one of those. Well, I got to get a Black Christmas ornament made by Claire. Well, I suppose another month under the bridge won't hurt anything, <laughs> right? Uh, two trolls like us, we can <laughs> we can handle that. Yeah. Hit us up on social media. Uh, we're on Twitter, Instagram. TikTok. I, I just had a TikTok video uh, go up the other day. We got nice. some we got some views there. So if you uh, if you found us through TikTok, welcome. Thanks for uh, thanks for listening. Uh, we are at Horror the Number Four Holidays. We are also there on the Q app where we spin the wheel, make the deal yes, yes. for what our next movie will be going to be. So we don't have to fight about whether we're going to watch <laughs> Krampus Origins or Krampus Two, Krampus Year. The last sleigh ride, <laughs> and we uh, so instead we let the let the wheel on the Q app decide let for us. Let the wheel decide our fate. Follow us on on YouTube. YouTube dot com slash horror for the holidays for all the audio backups and amazing comments like I, Jeff show more boobs. <laughs> I uh, I really like we got a uh, we got a fair amount on the leech which I was mm-hmm. really surprised there. I don't know yes. what our fo- total listener total was for everything. But I'm really happy that The Leech did yes. so well because that was a really fun movie. Yeah, I was glad too. Because usually those ones that don't have the snappy titles don't tend to do too well. Mm-hmm. And, uh, fo- uh, you know, follow us on your podcatcher. Rate, review, subscribe. Give us five stars. The Apples, the Spotify's, whatever the kids are doing these days. If you And if you hated it, uh, leave us a five-star review and put down... These guys are as fat as the movie and Sa- P- the movie people in Santa's sleigh thought Goldberg was. <laughs> yes, we are actually that fat guy. See, that's what happened. They CGI'd us out of the movie and inserted Goldberg. They're actually commenting on us. <laughs> uh, anything else I'm missing, Jeff? <sighs> Just that, once again, I want to highlight that I have been subjected to yet another Canadian film for you people. And you don't even have the decency to send me a thank you email. For all that I've suffered. <laughs> and I'm sure there'll be more coming. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know what? Leave us a comment on YouTube too. It's a great way to get in touch with us. Yeah. Um, just, you know, anything like that, you know, let us know you appreciate us and, and, and tell a friend, uh, the you know, fastest way podcasts, you know, podcast ratings and reviews uh, can do a lot, but you know, the, the best way to get someone to watch a movie is, is that word of mouth, yeah. you know, the, the amount of times that, Jeff or I have told each other about a podcast and we started listening to it because someone, you know, because a friend recommended it or something yeah. is huge. It, you know, true. it does a lot for it. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's tell a friend Monday <laughs> and uh, tell a friend about the podcast, I guess. Just tell, uh, Hey, get a load of these two fat weirdos and their stupid podcast. <laughs> and their stupid <laughs> podcast with a very strange premise. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, anything else you want to say? Yeah, I just want to say that that connecting flight in Borneo to get to the North Pole is ridiculous. <laughs> where, where the airline industry got... I mean, honestly, I think this is our current, whatever year this is, that you're listening to it, government's fault. <laughs> oh man, I hate I hate connecting that flight through Ottawa on my way to Borneo flying North Pole Air. Yeah, you know, I just hate... Oh, well, let's, let's future proof this man. I really hate current politician and I really hate government intervention in our airline industry. <laughs> you could just go ahead and swap that out with whatever commentary you want to make. You know, those, those clowns up in Washington <laughs> yes. with their, with their big feet and their red noses their and their tiny, tiny cars. cars. Yeah. 
and they're flowers and they, they you lean in and you think oh this clown in washington wants to wants me to smell their nice smelling flower and then they squirt me in the face with water or you know they say they're gonna solve your problem and then all you get's a pie in the face yeah oh, man those classic clowns yeah. with their white face paint and their big <laughs> pants and their multicolored wigs and their stupid acrobatics yeah oh, i hate them so yeah. much all right. Well, <laughs> well, this has gone on long enough. <laughs> we've 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 dragged this on long enough. We'll we'll see you guys again in two weeks. Uh, thanks for listening. Goodbye. Bye. How do I stop this thing? <laughs>